Did you watch Monique on Club Shay Shay? Come on in the room because there's some things that I need to talk to you about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hey, boo. But if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. We need to get straight to it because there is so much that I need to unpack with y'all because woohoo! I spent the last three hours last night watching the full episode with Shannon Sharp and Monique, and it was juicy. Full disclosure, there's going to be some spoiler alerts. So if you have not watched the full episode, go on over to Club Shay Shay, go on over to Shannon Sharp's YouTube channel, watch the whole thing. And I'm not going to lie, it's just as long, longer than the Cat Williams video. It is almost three hours, y'all. It's two hours and 55 minutes long so prepare yourself and then come back and chat with me in the comments because i know y'all got some stuff that y'all want to talk about and so do i just like with the cat williams video that i did that i'll link up here just in case y'all want to see my perspective on that i'm not here to say if mo was right if she's wrong the truth because honestly i don't know and you really don't know either it's all speculation it's all he said she said but according to her she got the evidence she got audio messages and tapes and proof so until I personally hear and see it, I'm just going to say allegedly. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is don't count the underdog out. I did not know that Mo actually was in remedial classes when she was in school growing up. I had no clue. And so I'm sure with all of the other stereotypes that she had, because she talked about being made fun of because of her weight and being fat and black, as she said, but also too, I know kids are cruel and they were probably talking mess about her and calling her dumb and stupid too. So to think that someone who was in remedial classes for their early school years and now to be where she's at, now is admirable you would think that she would be a little bit behind the curve you would think you know there was some things you know mentally going on with her that she probably would not have made it but i love the fact that she mentioned that because oftentimes we think some of the most unlikely people they're not gonna make it mm -mm. They too far ahead. They got too much trauma. They've been through too much. They're stupid. They're ugly. They're tall. They're short. There were so many different things that people will say about you, especially when you are younger and in school and people will count you out. But sometimes you got to prove people wrong. And clearly with all of her success and all of the wonderful things that she has done thus far, she proved a whole bunch of us wrong. And it's so encouraging because there's some little boy or some little girl in remedial classes right now who's saying, oh my god I don't know how I'm gonna make it oh my god people are making fun of me I'm never gonna be anything maybe I am stupid but to tell and see her story that can encourage some other kids growing up too that they can make it they can be successful they can have amazing careers if they choose to put their mind to it and while we're on this I feel like Shannon Sharp falls under the same category not necessarily about the remedial part but think about everything that he went through with the show and all of the stuff that he was on and now he's built his own thing on his own youtube channel which surpassed the gig that he had before and now he is killing it i'm sure once his contract ended and everything went down with the whole situation that he was a part of which i don't even know all the details too because i'm not really a sports girl i'm not really in the sports world like that but what i heard and what happened between him and how he went and did his own thing people were probably like it's not gonna last uh-uh he's not gonna make it it's not gonna be as big and chow he's surpassing them <laughs> so it's really just a powerful thing when you say you know what i'm a bet on myself just like shannon sharp said in a recent video he said i'm a bet on myself i'm always gonna bet on black pun intended the second thing that I want to talk to y'all about real quick is that you cannot make anybody apologize to anybody. Monique spent so much time and energy talking about Oprah. She mentioned her a million and one time. Talking about Tyler Perry, mentioned him a million and one times. Talked about DL, talked about Kevin Hart, and all of these experiences from her own truth. But it was a little rough because it was almost like she was trying to say these things to force them to be held accountable, which I understand. Like, I absolutely believe that people need to be accountable for their actions and all of those things. But it, it felt a little extra 
it felt a little heavy because we all know that you can't make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. I don't care how many times you come on TV. I don't care how many times you come on Club Shay Shay. I don't care how many times you and your husband go live on social media. Nobody is going to really take accountability until they are ready to take accountability. And so I know that she said that this can be rectified and they can make it right and all of those things. I get that. People can make things right and y'all can move forward but if you are holding your breath Monique because <laughs> baby holding your breath until you get an apology from someone is not the thing to do and I'm gonna give y'all a nugget on this before we move on to the next one but some of y'all need to grieve apologies that you've never got <laughs> some of y'all need to grieve apologies that you will never get <laughs> because it's holding you back and it's stifling you go ahead forgive the person move on with your life and let God deal with them. Okay. Let God be God. You understand that God vindicates. Okay. So this is not even my battle. It's his. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about that Monique is hell bent on is calling her husband, daddy. <laughs> I don't even have enough time in this video to really talk about this whole thing. And I understand, I really do get the perspective because she's like, he encouraged me. He grew me up. I learned a lot of things from him and that's wonderful. But those are also things that a real partner is supposed to do. Your partner is supposed to challenge you. Your partner is supposed to hold the mirror up to you and say, nah, baby, that's wrong. Your partner is supposed to shine some light on some things and to help you become a better person, whether that's mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, relationally, all of the things. That's what a partner is supposed to do. But when you cross the line and start calling your partner daddy, just because he did those things, things this is really giving me some trauma um she talked about her psychiatrist and how that person was amazing and i don't know that person and i'm sure they are probably awesome but there's something deeper that we need to dig into here i don't care what you do you do not need to walk around calling your man your husband daddy now look what you do behind closed doors okay <laughs> it's up to you you can call them daddy zaddy waddy patty whatever you want to do behind closed doors in that bedroom you do that sis but in public, it sounds a little foolish. And it really goes deeper because she talked about her dad not being present for a huge chunk of her life, right? So it's giving me some daddy issues. It's giving me some daddy wounds that she did not heal from. And now she's projecting all of that onto her husband. And now he has this extra layer of responsibility to be her daddy when he really should just be her companion and her partner. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about, and maybe it was just me, but I felt like Monique pressured Shannon Sharp a lot during those three hours of this interview. And when I say pressure, there was two million times where she was like, look at that camera and say it. Look over here and say it. No, you say it. You tell them. She did that so many times. And there were many moments throughout this interview where I know that Shannon Sharp was uncomfortable. I saw it over his face multiple times throughout this conversation because I know it made him feel uncomfortable. I don't know what happens behind the scene with his production and his team and how he gets guests and all of those things, but he is really cracking right now. He is popping right now. And I'm sure that he does not want to get canceled. I'm sure that being that his channel and his interviews and everything that he has going on is skyrocketing. I'm sure he don't want no mess and he don't want no personal smoke from Tyler, from Oprah, from Kevin Hart, from anybody DL that Mo mentioned in this interview. So to put that pressure on him to say, well, you look at that camera and you tell them to make it right on my behalf and you tell them to do exactly what need. <laughs> Relax. Let Shannon Sharp do what Shannon Sharp wants to do. Now, he did mention that Mo sent him the audio from Tyler Perry, and he heard it with his own ears that Tyler Perry did say that he ran her name through the mud, right? And he put out this rumor with her and about her in Hollywood that she is difficult to work with and so on and so forth. Now, if he heard it with his own ears and he believed that the audio was correct, then cool, do you do that. But I think Shannon was like, girl, you're not about to get me in this mess. Girl, you're not about to get me canceled. Girl, I'm at the height of my situation going on over here and it's going well. So don't come messing up my stuff over here. So there were multiple times where he kind of went around the question. And I think that that was smart, right? Because I feel like Mo wants to get as many people on her side as possible. 
And I get it. When you have been blackballed and when you have lost a whole bunch of money and your name has really been dragged through the mud, you do want people to rock with you. You do want people on your side as much as possible. But people got to be on your side because they want to be on your side, not because you are pulling them in or reeling them in and pressuring them to be on your side. That's two different things. Also, too, while we're here and talking about Shannon Sharp, I felt this way with the Cat Williams interview, but Shay Shay needs to get better with his transitions when it comes to his questions. Look, I know he has a whole stack of cards that he be reading from. Look, just like this. <clears throat> He'd be like, so Moni. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to make fun of him, but his transitions be a little off like sometimes there isn't any or he just says something random or he'll be talking about one thing and he'll completely jump to another question it's just like well where was the bridge between those two because as a viewer and as a watcher I need to track you you know what I'm seeing one moment he's talking about the Parkers and Moesha and then the next moment he's talking about some oh your weight well take us there give us a bridge between the two how did we jump from here to here you know like Shannon just, I'm not saying you're a horrible host because I don't think that you are, but I think we need to work on that. Please work on that. And last but not least, the thing that I want to talk to you guys about before I give my final thoughts is Mo's mannerism and her words. Y'all know I'm really big on words and actions aligning. The words that come out of your mouth should be congruent with your body language. Now, we all know that Monique is very sharp with her words. She's always been assertive. She has been a straight shooter. And I get that because I relate to that because in some ways, that's how I am too. But then too, she went around and kind of softened what she was saying with baby and sweetie. And we can't do that to our babies. And honey, I love that queen. I love that king. That's my dude. -do -do -do. <laughs> she did all of that. And it was just like, at, mo at times I was like the body language and the words and the tone of voice and the choice of words didn't line up with me. I do believe that she articulated herself well. I was like, baby know what she's talking about and she's standing on her truth. She did not budge. She looks Shannon Sharp straight in the eyes, right? And maybe she messed up on some different scenarios and situations and didn't give some details, especially when it came to the D.L. Hughley situation. But it seems like she was standing in her truth. She had stories to back up some things. She had conversations and audio to back up some things. She was in alignment with what Cat Williams was saying. And she was like, it's because of the messenger. <laughs> and that's why people are not receptive of us. It's because Cat Williams is under 5'5". Five five. It's because I'm a fat black woman. That's why people are not listening to us, but we're telling the truth. So it was just interesting to me how the interview was out in like 2.5 seconds and then D.L. Hughley was already online <laughs> disputing what she said. And then Monique and her husband had to come on a live and then try to refute what he said as well. So I was like, okay, all of this is getting messy boots. And I completely understand why it's just a lot going on. And it also got messy with Cat Williams too. So I don't know why Shannon is dropping all of these comedians on his show, but the comedy industry, the comedic industry is going through a lot right now. Okay. Male and female. So I'm interested in figuring out and finding out how all of this will play out. My final thoughts on this is I'm going to be tracking the story. I'm going to be following. I know there's going to be new stories and new people coming out with bits and pieces. And y'all know if that happens, I'm probably going to come back for a part two on this. But it is a very amazing thing for you to stand in your truth. I appreciate Shay Shay for providing a platform where people can come on, whether he knows they're telling the truth or not. And to state what needs to be said, to get things off of their chest, to express their truth and to lift that load, especially when you are in the limelight and people have been saying things about you and you've been tight lipped and quiet for years or months or however long. And you finally just want to share your side of the story and to have a platform in front of a black man where you can do that. I think it's pretty dope. One thing I know for sure, <laughs> just like I said with the Cat Williams video, I was like, Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart, all of them, they're not going to respond to this. Absolutely not. I also feel like Tyler Perry and Oprah and probably Kevin Hart will not respond to this either. And they probably won't come on Club Shay Shay either because they got a lot 
to lose. Think about it. And this is just a question that I'm posing to you. If you were a billionaire, if you were Oprah, if you were Tyler, I don't think Kevin Hart's a billionaire yet. But anyways, if you were one of them, would you come on a platform and to tell your side of the story? Would you do that? I personally don't think that I would, not because I'm wrong or because I did something inappropriate. It's because I got too much to lose to be sitting on somebody's couch talking about some shoulda, coulda, wouldas, who did this, playing the blame game. I don't have time for that. I got a million and one other things to do, right? And if I'm sitting down and talking to her about her grievances, I'm sure somebody else who had a problem with me thinks that I'm going to sit down and talk about their grievances too. I ain't got time for that. So the best thing, the appropriate thing to do, especially when you got something to lose, is to not respond at all. And like I mentioned before, let God vindicate you. So thank you so much for watching another video on my channel. I hope that something that I said in here was helpful to you, something that sparked some type of conversation, gave you something to think about. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this with somebody who want to kiki in the chat, and I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.